This lesson covers the configuration of the Windows Server Update Services. After installation, it's already prompted me to launch my post installation tasks, or I can manually just launch Windows Server Update Services. It's already got the path that I selected during the installation, and I'm gonna say run the final steps of the installation process. That process typically takes a couple of minutes. It's now completed. I can click close. And now it's walking me through that initial configuration. It's advising me that does it have connectivity to allow clients to access this server? So is there a server firewall that's gonna block configuration? Can I connect to Microsoft Update? Do I require any credentials? I need to pass these details during this wizard. So if you wanna be part of the Microsoft Update Improvement Program, so who is the upstream server? So remember I talked about the different topologies. If this is the first WSUS server and this is the server that's gonna to connect to Microsoft Update, i.e. it's the upstream server, you want to synchronize from Microsoft Update. If this is a different server, one that's downstream and wants to connect to an existing WSUS to get its updates, you would say synchronize from another Windows Server Update Services server, specify its server name, and then it will use that for its update. There is actually a mode, if you have an environment where your intranet has zero connectivity to the internet, it's actually possible to place a WSUS server in your DMZ, allow it to download the updates, and then basically export out that metadata, those updates that it's got configured, and then import them onto a WSUS server on your intranet. So you can get some very complex configurations if you need that in your environment. So this is very flexible. Do I require a proxy when synchronizing? So if you have to go via a proxy service in your environment, you would put those details in here. This would typically match your web browser configuration. I'm now gonna say start connecting. This is now gonna contact Microsoft Update. So this is gonna verify that connectivity exists and it's gonna download what languages, what products, classifications are available that I could then offer through this local server. A download may take a few minutes, depending on the speed of your internet connection. Once it's complete, I can now configure my options. I can say the languages I wish to download updates for. So I've got English configured. Which products? So this will depend on what you're targeting for this environment and obviously what products you have running in your environment. If you're gonna configure all your machines to leverage Windows Server Update Services, you need to make sure you are downloading the patches for those products, or those products would go unpatched. Conversely, the more products you select here, the more you're downloading and the more you have to actually make sure that you have space for. So by default, it's selecting Office. It's selecting all of the different Windows versions. So for my test environment right here, I'm gonna turn off Office. And I'm also gonna turn off all of the Windows. I'm just going to enable this for Windows Server 2012. I'm then going to make sure I download the critical updates, definition updates for the malware protection, security updates, and I'll also take updates, update rollups, and service packs. I can configure when it should synchronize with Microsoft Update. So I'm going to say synchronize automatically every day at 2 a.m and I can still run it manually should I wish. So this is gonna take some time. Obviously the more products you selected, the more metadata it has to pull down about all the different patches that are available. Because I only selected Windows Server 2012, it shouldn't take that long. It's now showing me the additional steps I should perform. For example, using Secure Sockets layer with WSUS, creating computer groups so I can target where I'm deploying patches to assign computers to groups using group policy, and then configure auto approval rules. By default, I have to manually approve all of the updates that will get sent to my clients, but I can say certain types of patch should just get approved automatically. So I'm gonna hit finish and let that initial synchronization commence. I can see here the synchronization is still carrying on. However, already I can see there's a number of security updates waiting to be approved, critical updates, and currently it's showing me there are no computers registered to receive these updates at all. 
It's now completed. Again, I can synchronize now to manually trigger this at any time. I can go to my computers, and by default, I have an all computers group. If I set my all computers, I can add my own computer group. So I might call this Windows 2012 Patch Tests. And say Add. So I now have a new group. These groups will be used as part of the group policy that I can deploy. So in the group policy object, I'll define people who get the group policy should be added to a particular computer group within WSUS. I can go to my options. And here I can do a lot of that configuration that I already performed. I can change my synchronization schedule. I can specify how to assign computers to groups. So I can say if I'm manually going to assign them or to use that group policy I talked about earlier. So I actually use that option. I can specify automatic approval rules. So I can actually create a new rule and I can say when a certain type, approve it for certain collections. So my new rule might say when it's for a specific product. So I select that and I can see a list of the products I have. So again, for me, it might just be my Windows Server 2012. So if it's Windows Server 2012, I can approve the update, maybe just for my patch test group, and only if it's of type. Maybe I only want to enable it if it's a definition update. So I want my malware protection and maybe critical updates to be automatically approved. So Win 2012, critical and definition rule. I have some advanced rules for if there's updates for the WSUS product itself. Obviously, I generally would want to automatically apply those. Approve new revisions of updates that have already been approved. It's very common to see a new update that replaces a previous version. This therefore lets me automatically approve anything that supersedes an existingly approved update. So I can enable that automatic update rule, but I'm going to turn that off for now. I can see all of my updates that are waiting for me to approve. Once I approve them, it will then actually go and pull those down from the network. So right now the view is showing me all those that are unapproved, that have failed or needed. Well, at this point I have no clients using this environment, so there's no way for this to know which machines actually require updates or which updates are required by my environment. I can change that to just say any, and that will show me all of them. I can then see all these different updates for the environment. I could just show me critical updates. security, and so on. I can then select a single update and approve. I can select all updates and approve. And I can select the group that I'm going to approve these for. So these are now approved for installation, and it's gone through and now approved all of those critical updates for my environment. It's showing me none of them are installed, which makes sense because currently I have no clients. I can go to the summary view, and it actually shows me a graphical representation of my update status. All of this configuration can also be done through PowerShell. If I do a get module list available, I can see I have the update services module, which is where all my WSUS commandlets live. I can say git command module update services. And really that the 10 most common functions you ever want to perform in WSUS are now enabled through PowerShell. I can add computers to groups. I can approve updates, deny updates, get a list of the classifications, the products, the servers, the updates. I can perform a cleanup of redundant patches that are still stored on the file system and also set my configuration for what I want to actually download. So for example, I can do my get WSUS product. And this is showing me all the products that are available that I could possibly patch using WSUS. And then I could actually go and configure those updates using the other commandlets. So definitely take some time, look at the different commandlets available, and try all these configurations using PowerShell in addition to the GUI. But the important part is you make sure you have enabled WSUS to manage the products that you have in your environment using these products and classifications and then you approve those updates or create those auto approval rules. If you don't have auto approval rules, it's very important that as part of your management process, you do have some reminder to come and approve those updates. Maybe as part of the patch Tuesday process, you perform a manual synchronization, 
and then go through, look at what updates are available and approve them accordingly. 